Welcome to the Nifty Chicks. In this episode, we chat with Alex Cavalacos, co-founder and CEO of Meta Angels. She talks about the unique process they've designed to break down the barriers and welcome more people into the world of NFTs. Let's do this. Welcome to the Nifty Chicks. Hi, Nifty Cell. How are you? Hi, Gen NFT. I'm great. How are you? I am good. Did you just hear my dog who happened to wake up from a nap and is now sneezing? Oh, oh <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course, of course. Oh. Uh, gosh, I'm so excited for this episode. Um, we had a chance to meet Alex uh, at our very first night of NFT NYC at the dinner table. And she was just so warm and bubbly and welcoming. And I'm just so excited for this uh, interview. I agree. I, I thought it was really funny when they walked in and, you know, they were like, oh, can we sit here? We haven't had anything to eat. And I was like, well, hopefully they'll still have food for you because it was it was getting pretty late. And they were like really trying to like pull plates and, and shut it down. And luckily they they were able to feed them. And so they sat down and, you know, of course, we introduced ourselves. And I was like, wait, I know your name. I've been emailing with you and you're going to be on the show. And it was just small world, right? They could have sat anywhere. Yeah, I know. And, you know, the reason why they were late to this, um, the speaker dinner, was because they were hosting their own event, which was what they said, a killer event. So I'm so sorry yeah. I missed it because that sounded I know. awesome. I know. I know. Oh, well. There was, a, you know, there were, I think somebody said that there were over 350 ancillary events at NFT NYC. So there was no way that you could be at all of those extra events. I mean, even just no. being at NFT NYC, it was impossible to do and be at all the things that you wanted to be at. I mean, we missed people's yeah. talks because we were, I mean, it was, it's just nonstop while you're there. Yeah. But it, it was not because we didn't want to go. Let's be clear. Like, Everything yeah. sounded awesome. And like, I've heard just nothing but incredible feedback from all of the events, all of those events. And there's a lot of hard work in logistics that go into all of those events. And so like hats Absolutely. off to those. I'm hoping perhaps we can host our own and partner with someone to host our own next year. Um, but it's it's going to be hard work. Um, but like, let me tell you, I, I I seriously FOMO'd from all of those uh, events that we missed out, including the Meta Angels and Alex's event on Monday night. Yeah, guys. yeah. Can't but we had a great conversation with Alex, right. and I I know I don't know about you, Jen FT, but I actually didn't own a Meta Angel, but I'm thinking I'm gonna go look at them and find my perfect Meta Angel to purchase. Yeah. Yeah. I also, and I, I don't want to, I mean, I don't want to like spoiler alert, but I really love one of the, the things I love the most about them is we talk about this is that they have, they each have their own unique description. And I think that that's really cool and unique to them um, cool. amongst many other things that they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's super cool what they're doing. And I just see uh, like nothing but good things on the horizon with them. And they obviously have great leadership too at the helm, um, which is always a good confidence builder when, when trying to decide whether to invest and buy the NFTs and what they're doing is awesome. Love it. Yeah. And, and also a great community. I know. I know. Yeah. yeah they're, they're building something special there. Yep. For sure. So let's go ahead before we just you know, like ruin the whole interview because we've already said everything about it. Uh, let's go ahead and listen to the chat with Alex. Let's do it. Okay. Welcome to the Nifty Chicks. We are excited to have Alex Kavalakis with Meta Angels. Welcome to the show, Alex. We are so excited to have you here today. So tell us just a little bit about yourself. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here and to chat with you both. Um, so I'm Alex Kavalakis. I'm a serial entrepreneur. I've been building um, startups and companies for over a decade. And um, I'm the co-founder and CEO of Meta Angels, which is an NFT membership community. Uh, we were founded on the values of generosity, transparency, and accessibility, and really building a network of people who are there to help lift each other up, be in each other's corner, and break down the sort of gated walls that are often... Um, they're in the networks that are most valuable. And so how do we build a really valuable community that helps people in their real life um, 
but where anyone can get in. Um, and so that was really a big inspiration for us was to take what had helped us in our lives and these gated networks, whether it's you know business school or, or um, undergrad or Y Combinator, um, all these places where someone else had left, let us in and creating a space that anyone could come join us. So yeah, so my question on that, so I'm hearing the accessibility, the transparency, mm -hmm. I think is, is incredible. And that's some of the things that we talk about as being one of the core challenges for women, specifically breaking mm -hmm. into the NFT space and the crypto space in general. Mm -hmm. So um, question for you is like, how are we as women who are in the space going to help kind of continue breaking down that barrier. You're doing a lot of great things with Meta Angels, but what can some of our listeners do to kind of help pioneer the mission that you're already on? Yeah, I mean, it's a great question in terms of bringing new folks into the space. I think so much of what makes the space inaccessible um, is gatekeeping and actually some really simple ways. Um, jargon and language is one of them. Right. The minute, you know, you forget how hard it can be to fully understand the space and then you go down the rabbit hole and you start using all that same language. Um, and so and if you're talking to friends, if you're explaining what you're, you know, what you're interested in, why they might be interested in it um, or people who are curious and who are trying to get into the space, I think really bringing it down to the basics is super, super important um, because there is a lot of jargon in the space. Um, the other thing I think that's really important is to sort of look holistically at the space, right? Like it's when when sort of the most expensive projects or the hardest to get into projects are the only ones lifted up. That doesn't feel accessible. That doesn't feel like a starting point. And so how do you help people you know, explore and learn? I'm someone who learns by doing. So I had to mint first, I had to buy first, understand before I really understood. Um, and then I had to build myself to really sort of go even deeper. But for others, they may have their way that they prefer to learn. And so I think doing it alongside someone and, and giving them the time to figure it out, this is not a space to rush. Um, that's how you make mistakes. So true. Yeah. So tell me, how did you come up with the idea of Meta Angels? And then I also, I, I love your uh, benefits that come with being an owner. So it's kind of a two-part question, but I'd love to hear where the idea started from and then... Also, I, I would like you to share with everybody, you know, the benefits of yeah. being an owner. Happy to. Yeah. So um, my co-founder, Ali, um, was one who really came up with the initial idea. And so, you know, when we'd been talking about what an NFT really is in the context of a collection, right, not in the context of a one of one, uh, it's really the cross between a personal brand and a membership card. That's how we've, we've, we've looked at it. And so looking at the space, this was sort of end of 2021, um, what was the personal brand that we wanted to represent ourselves, right? What's our personal brand, both mission-wise and values-wise, but also visually, right, aesthetically? And then the second piece is what's the kind of membership club I'd want to be a part of? And so those two things came together and really this idea of tokenization of a network, which hadn't really been explored in this way, and saying some of the most valuable things that I've been able to get in my life as I've, you know, both personally and professionally, I turn to these networks that I'm a part of, right? And a lot of people have networks like that. Um, a lot of very successful people have very, you know, niche networks that they can go to and they ask questions. And so I can go, if I'm fundraising, I have people who I can go talk to about that when I was fundraising for my last startup. If, they're, you know, thinking about hiring, there might be other people I would ask, do you know someone I could hire for this? If I wanted to negotiate a raise, there are people that I might ask, what do you get paid for this? And then I could ask and get their feedback. If I'm thinking about hiring a nanny or choosing between that and daycare, there's people I could turn to for that. I feel like for almost any question in my life, I'm really fortunate to have both developed, but also been included in these networks. And so had Ali. And the idea of what if we could just blow the gates off of that? What if we could make it possible for anyone who is has that same idea and that same those same values of generosity of wanting to help others? The idea of a you know rising tide lifting all boats. People who like to give and connect just for the sake of it, knowing that good stuff comes around, but you're not doing it to get anything in particular from somebody. You just want to help. What could we do with thousands of those people together? Um, and that's really where the, a lot of the inspiration for Red Angels came from. And we've seen that. We've seen people negotiate raises, get jobs, find co-founders, get support as new parents and more uh, because they've just turned to you know, the Meta Angels community. So the core of it is what we call our wishing well, where any of our members can go and ask for literally anything that they need. Um, and people will come and they will jump in and help and point them to the right direction or give resources or share their own experience or make a connection. 
Um, and then one of the things that was always a little bit of this sort of friction point from the original idea was we want to make this open network. But one of the things about the blockchain and one of the things about creating a, a community in a, a collection there is that you don't actually set your price of admission. The secondary market is not something that founders or teams uh, right. control as much as people might like that, to believe that. <laughs> and so when we looked at the trajectory and said, if we continue to build and create value, regardless of, you know, bull or bear market at the time, we weren't we weren't in a bear market. But either way, we're saying, you know, as we continue to grow, we don't want people who could really benefit from and contribute to the community to be priced out. But we won't be able to control the price. So how do we handle that? Right. And out of that came this innovation, um, which I know you were alluding to, was around our lending program. And so we were the first of its kind, um, you know, lending technology on the blockchain. We pioneered this concept that if you have, you know, I let's say you have three meta angels, you could lend one to a friend. You don't need three of them to get access to our benefits. You only need one. And so you could lend one to a friend, one to a neighbor or a colleague, um, and they would have all the same benefits as being a member, but they couldn't sell or transfer it. If they got hacked, hacker couldn't sell or transfer it. Only the owner can pull it back into their wallet. And so it became this way to allow people to share and be generous with the angels they were collecting while giving more people access to the community, whether or not they could afford it. Um, and those folks tend to give back as well. We've had people, artists who couldn't afford to buy Meta Angel be loaned one, but then donate a piece to be raffled off to the community because they wanted to give back or donate their time. Um, there's actually, there was a grant given to um, certain types of folks. Uh, and that came from someone who said, that's something I have control doing in my job. I can provide these grants, but I, I couldn't buy an angel myself, right? And so this way of just sort of giving and passing, you know, passing it forward um, has been so fantastic. Um, and it's also a great layer of security on top of the blockchain, right? Not being able to have it loaned or transferred um, is really, really important. So that's another piece. Um, in terms of benefits, we do weekly angel grants ourselves. So we do a 0.25 ETH grant every Friday to someone in our community, no strings attached. Uh, we have a form to apply. People have applied for personal reasons, professional reasons, small things, big things, to get internet after they move, to reunite families who haven't seen each other through COVID, all sorts of things, um, to buy equipment to be able to record um, videos again. And we get to give that out and share and, and, and have the community partake in that. Uh, we also have an artist in residence program in partnership with Adobe, which is a year long partnership. It's really fantastic. Uh, where we've been selecting emerging artists every month. And those artists get commissioned a piece, so they get paid. Um, they also get exposure. We do a spaces with them. We help them grow their following. And uh, the piece that we commission is a free mint for our holders. So it becomes this like lovely win-win where now you get exposure to a ton of people who get to collect your work as well. So our first one is Kelly Llanos, phenomenal artist out of um, who's Colombian, lives in Barcelona. Um, and we're just about to announce our next artist for July as well. So really excited about that. Sure, there's other things I've missed, um, but those are some of the benefits of being part of Met Angels. That's, That's so amazing. amazing. I yeah, I just I love everything that you guys are doing. It's so it's just so in the spirit of women supporting women and what we all like to think Web three is all about, right? Yeah. 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 yeah I agree. And one of the things I you know, Minty Sell and I have the pleasure of living in an incredible place called Puerto Rico. Um, but with that came this community that, you know, as soon as I moved in, I got onto this, like the signal chat, Palmas United. And within that, and all the WhatsApp groups that come, you know, all with that is like these incredible people doing incredible things and who are sharing their knowledge and resources with, you know, fellow neighbors. And I thought to myself, like, man, I'm so lucky and fortunate to be able to move to Puerto Rico and have access to this. But that's such a physical barrier that not everyone can move to Puerto Rico. So I'm seeing that you guys are like really breaking down so many like physical barriers and economical bar barriers and and like really opening up your entire community and ecosystem to everyone, including those who may not be, um, you know, able to typically buy or participate in these communities. It's super, super cool. Yeah, no, it's been great. It's also been great, you know, there are example, artists who are trying to figure out how to transition to Web3. Yeah. And they can, you know, through a contact they found on Twitter, end up being, you know, borrowing an angel potentially finding collectors, connecting with Solidity developers, connecting with other artists who go, hey, here's where I started. Actually, don't do your own smart contract. I recommend starting here. How do you think about pricing? Um, we also have collectives. 
um, which you can opt into, which are sort of smart, smaller channels um, to find people who have the same interests as you. So we have them industry-based with an arts one. Uh, we have a, you know, a science and medicine one. We have a tech and startups one, um, but also sort of life stage or things you might be interested in. So we have a meta parents one, which is a super popular one, um, but also a traveling angels. And if you're traveling, hey, who has recommendations for Puerto Rico, for example, we might yeah. show up there. So it's been really lovely to be able to also make those connections with folks. Um, and and for people to sort of, it's like anything else, you get into it, what you you take out of it. Mm -hmm. And it's the, the thing is Web3 is overwhelming. So we also wanted to create a space where you could step away for a little while and come back and it always be welcome. Um, and it's been really lovely to see sometimes people will come and see, there'll be a wish that was you know posted a week or two ago. And someone has come back and, and they're going through and they're reading the wishes. They're like, oh, I can help with that one. And they have that moment of being able to give, right? Yeah. And the other person gets the moment of getting that that help that they were looking for. Um, so that's exciting as well to allow, you know, we, we try to orchestrate it so that you don't have to be there 24 seven. It's just impossible. Um, and we don't want people to feel that level of pressure. Yes, it is impossible. <laughs> it's so hard to keep up. Yeah, Is absolutely. it ever? Yeah. yeah. Um, so I actually have a question. So we actually just met in person mm -hmm. last week at NFT NYC. I'd love to get your perspective on what you thought of the conference as a whole and more kind of specifically what you thought about um, kind of the ratio of women versus men in at the conference. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I thought, I mean, overall, I think the conference was a sort of ball of energy Right. And like a deep, it Definitely. feels like this pent up desire for connection, for creativity, for fun, for exploration um, that, you know, to me, so especially it's actually in a way better for me that it was in a bear market because it gave people a chance to sort of reconnect to what really matters. Right. And getting to meet, I got to meet a number of artists that I collect. It was really wonderful to do that. Um, met, you know, dozens and dozens of other founders and teams and moderators that I know from Twitter and from Discord. Um, and so getting those in-person connections, I thought was so, so valuable. Uh, I mean, there was way more going on than people could possibly partake in, which I think is actually funny. It's like the FOMO you live online in Web3 is what's happening in, in real life in New York as well. But, um, but, but everything was, you know, a, a chance to make a deeper connection. So I think for people, I, I really tried to focus on that in every event I went to or everything I did is if I could, could have that moment to have a little bit of a deeper connection versus sort of jumping around. Um, that was a time well spent. Um, in terms of the ratio, better than some conference I've been to, I think we're moving in the right direction. Right. I'm probably biased because we kicked off the week with a four hour summit that was focused on celebrating women in Web3, collectors, creators, artists. So that was 130 women in one room already. And then going to a bunch of events, um, both that we had co-hosted and organized, the ratio was a lot better there. There's definitely moments I was in the Marriott Marquis on the escalator and I looked around, I was like, I'm the only woman on this escalator. Or I walked into, you know, walked through this one room to get to the green room to speak. And I was like, this room has no other women in it. Um, but I had to like pay attention to have those moments a little bit more than before. Um, okay. But again, I'm, the, the places I chose to go probably didn't reflect all of the the events that were there. I'm curious, what did, how about you two? What did you think? Uh, well, so I, I've been attending crypto conferences since probably like 2017 and i have definitely seen an increase in women over the years however i just really started going to nft conferences this year and the very first one i went to was uh, nfc portugal and i was i was shocked when i you know showed up i i expected it to be you know like a typical crypto conference and you know it'd be like 10% women, the rest mm -hmm. men. And I, I personally feel like it's about a 70, 30 right yeah. now. Um, however, I, I did just want to add. So I think it's really funny how we met in New York. <laughs> so we, we were all finished with dinner at the speaker dinner on what was that Monday night? Monday. Yeah. And um, you and Allie came in and sat, well, we had like half an empty table and you're like, oh, can we, can we sit with you guys? And we introduced ourselves and I'm like, wait, I know you, we've been I talking. Like, we're talking and, next week. <laughs> yeah. So it was, it was just funny how like it was meant to be for us. It to was. Be. It was. Yeah. And it's also one of those things where, you know, as much as there's can be 20,000 plus people there, you still end up making these individual connections and right. little, ta you know, in, in, in tables mm -hmm. and corners and booths and taxis and all over. Um, that's exactly how it happens. 
Yeah. Yeah. And, and I come from a tra traditional finance background and I'd have to say in any events that I go to there, it is, there are definitely more women. Um, it's still male dominant, but there are more women and coming to the NFT conference, I was like, wow, this is still super largely male. And, mm -hmm. um, but what I really felt comfort in is, um, how welcoming, all the bros and the dudes were. I mean, I really hadn't, I didn't have any uncomfortable experience there, which is rare, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, no uncomfortable experience. Everyone was super respectful um, and curious and helpful and welcoming um, male, women, everything in between. And so like, it was a really good experience. And I just think we all have more work to do, but we'll, we'll get there. We'll chip we away. We yeah. do have more work to do. And I think, I mean, I do think NFTs are, are really capturing the imagination. Yes. Um, across all genders in a way that traditional crypto and DeFi and the sort of either the technical or the financial side of Web3 maybe did not as much so. Mm -hmm. um, because all of a sudden you see this art, it can be, you know, obviously it's not just art, but that's the big piece that has really resonated with people. And you look for art that represents you and artists that you're passionate about. And that um, and there's so much around relationships and community and women are great at that. Right. And so I think that that's also been another reason why we've seen more female founded projects, more female artists. There's a ton of them. Um, yeah. So I'm really I'm hopeful for the space for sure. Um, but I think it, it makes sense as well. You know, I think there's a great. I don't know if it was an article or a post by Mai Akiyoshi, who's the CEO and co-founder of Curious Addies, who's lovely. Um, and she was saying, you know, people say women are risk averse, but it's not really that they're risk averse, it's that they're really like assessing, right? They're like, they assess the risk and there is, a, it is high risk to be in this space. And so that's not necessarily a bad thing, um, but how do you help introduce it to people in a way that feels more palatable? Yep. Yeah. I just wanted to share some of the artwork since you were yes. just... Absolutely. Yeah. Well, let me talk about, yeah. let me talk about our artist while you do that. So our artist, yeah. Sarana Haida, um, is a Maori Australian artist. She's been a working artist for over a decade, mom of four little girls, nine and under, who are incredible. Um, she works um, in the Web3 space under the moniker Aslan Ruby with her husband, Tom. Um, they are a dream team. And so we were so lucky to find her only a couple of weeks into her NFT journey. And we discovered her work and said, this, this is it she is the one because um, we were looking to create capital a art we were looking for something that had texture that felt like it would be you know completely welcome on the walls of a gallery or a museum mm -hmm. um, not just because it's an nft but despite being an nft just for the quality of the art itself um, we wanted each piece to feel like it had one of one quality even though it was a 10k collection um, and then we brought her in addition to all that we brought her the challenge of saying we want to have the full spectrum of race and gender we don't want to codify any traits as male or female, really look at it as a spectrum. Um, and we did that in less than two months. Um, the whole collection is over 400 different uh, layers that are combined. Um, depending on the wing type of your angel, you have different angel archetypes. So for example, the one on the left with the flowers is a wild angel. Um, the one with the um, celestial wings, a celestial angel. Um, there's ones that are elemental, there's guardian angels, opulent angels, um, and it's one of the rarest is the fallen angels and the lucky angels, which we might see if we're lucky. Um, and so sort of creating this whole collection and having the combination of all the traits create what people might read as gender. Um, I think those are really interesting. Yeah, so these are the fallen, they're all a little bit darker, um, right? and they're usually quite popular. There's not a lot of them listed in general. Yeah, there's like five here. Um, so yeah, it's been fun. Opulent are all the like gold and gilded and stained glass and um, Kintsugi, the blue and gold ones that was came inspired from someone in our collection. And then the lucky angels are like balloons and cupcakes and rainbows and all that fun yeah. stuff. So um, those are my daughter. My daughter's favorites are the lucky. Oh, yeah. Oh, all yeah. right. And, and sunshine. And yeah, so all of these are super fun. Um, but yeah, so it was an incredibly fun collection to create. Um, also one that allows people to find themselves in it, which is really nice, um, being able to go and find one that really feels like it represents you. And then each of the angels themselves has a unique description. So if you click on any of them, uh, it's an angel of something, and then it has a couple line description. Um, those 10,000 descriptions were generated by AI that we trained. So this is an angel of beneficence. You shower the world with your love and kindness, always looking for ways to help others, et cetera. And so we uh, trained an AI to generate 10,000 unique descriptions. And then because AI is never perfect, some of them were nonsensical, some were a little bit off. Um, we actually had over 100 volunteers from our community that kept this top secret 
project going for the couple of weeks before we minted and QA'd the entirety of the descriptions. Uh, wow. And so it was the equivalent of editing four novels in about two weeks around the clock uh, with people from all oh over the world, God. checking them and flagging which ones were good or they weren't. And so every single one has a different description, which is also part of the fun. So sometimes people will look for a description that they like. Versus yeah, I was, I was just thinking that. So how many yeah. people are looking for them now and finding them and being like, ooh, this has got to be worth more because messed up and also right? just find also just finding like what res like there's an angel of sarcasm or a couple of, they have different second and third lines but there's a handful of yeah. angels of sarcasm there's an angel of parents of teenagers which is hilarious the wow. description um there's but there's also there's angels of gastronomy right there's angels of um luck and angels of let's see what this one is an angel of children and kind a of guiding light in the, the world of childhood and so it's just kind of nice. And they all tie, you know, the the angels of opulence tend to have more opulent descriptions and the wild angels uh, will have, you know, different descriptions as well. So if you go, go to one with the butterflies, that one is a wild angel. Let's see, it's the angel of treetops, right? And so that you float above the world and you're looking down and you are venerated for your ability to withstand the test of time and provide perspective and wisdom to those who need it most. And some people really need that. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's funny. A lot of people have found angels that they find either angels they need or angels that represent them. We had a surgeon have something that talked about how you work with your hands to do things that are like your, your angel of craftsmanship or something like that. Um, so it's just been really, really beautiful to let people find themselves in the collection. I love that you um, capitalized on the description portion of these NFTs because not a lot of, I have not seen that done very often. Um, it's normally, obviously the artwork is unique and has various properties, but to have the description kind of give and build that character of that NFT mm -hmm. is really special and adds that extra layer of kind of relatability to. Yeah, it was something we, um, you know, it, we took inspiration from Crypto Coven. They did something similar, but a little bit more fantastical and fun, which is so in line with their brand and their mission and their sort of artwork. Uh, and so we took a little bit more of an earnest take on it, which sort of fits with the angels, but we wanted there to be something that speaks to it and, you know, uh, Saran, our artist, often has beautiful descriptions in her one of one collection, her patron saints collection in Wonder Country. She writes a lot about the art. Um, my co-founder, Ali, has an MFA in creative writing uh, and, on top of other degrees. And so we're like, you know, let's give it a little bit more character. We did not know when we decided to do it how much work it was going to end up being to do it <laughs> right. Um, right. But it was totally worth it. That's awesome. That's amazing. Yeah. So what is, what's the best way? I mean, obviously you're on OpenSea. You've mm -hmm. got your website, uh, metaangelsnft.com. Mm -hmm. But what is the best way to connect with you? Discord, Twitter? Yeah, I mean, to, in terms of following Meta Angels, there's the website. Um, there's Meta, we're Meta underscore Angels on Twitter. We share a lot of our updates on there as well. I'm at ACAV, A-C-A-V. Um, if anyone wants to follow me there, it's usually better to find me on Twitter in terms of DMs versus Discord, where it's just a black hole. Um, yeah. or I may have just turned them off at this point. Um, but yeah. obviously, you can find me in our Discord, the, the Meta Angels Discord. I'm there all the time. Um, so you can jump in there. You don't need to be a holder. You can join and you still have access to general and a couple other channels. Um, and we also have a lending asks and offers channel. So if you're curious about Meta Angels, you're not you know, able to buy one now, you want to see what it's like, you can go in there, introduce yourself, and someone will just raise their hand and a total stranger will lend you a meta angel so you can check it out so um that's, yeah that's the I, best I way to, to learn about it yeah i love that you guys are doing that i think that that's really special i've, I've never heard of any other mm -hmm. uh, you know I think as far as we know we're the first ones to do it but we encourage yeah. it's all about we're all about sharing it you know and passing it forward mm -hmm. so if anyone is curious about doing it you know we've written quite extensively um, about it and done Twitter threads and shared our smart contract for anyone else who wants to implement it. I know of a half dozen collections doing something similar um, that are building towards something. And I hope that it becomes more of a standard, right? right. That you can, you know, build accessibility into your collection. Mm -hmm. For example, you know, we were all just at NFT NYC and you couldn't like, for example, say I own, you know, multiples of a certain project and I wanted Jenna to come with me to an event. Mm -hmm. Like I would love to be able to loan her, you mm -hmm. know, one of my whatevers to mm -hmm. attend that event with me. Mm -hmm. Whereas right now, you know, I wouldn't have necessarily been able to do that, but yeah, that's a perfect you know, use case. And same thing for any token gated streaming, 
to look right. resources. Um, it's something that, you know, we, we think a lot about is, you know, there's so much, we're both creating so much um, wealth in the, in the broader scheme of things. I'm not talking about money, right? I'm talking about creating resources and knowledge and, and then, and then we're closing it up again. Right. And like, that's right. not, that's not the spirit of web three. That's certainly not the spirit of building community. Um, but you do have reasons to have people sort of to say, okay, this is who's part of the community, who's committed and who's growing it. And so how do you allow people to come in and contribute, even if it doesn't mean buying? Um, we right. definitely have people yeah. borrow and then decide to buy later. Either they were able to, or they got a, had a great experience and perfect. Let me let, let someone lend it to someone else um, right. or lend or lend it forward. Right. And that's been a, a great thing to be able to do as well. Um, but really thinking about, you know, we have folks who have teenagers doing civics work in East Asia, right? Like they don't need to buy them any to let us help them, right? And if they yeah. want to, great, absolutely. But that shouldn't be the barrier. Because I think that's what's happening. A lot of barriers are being created. And a lot of times it's actually not the original teams that want to create those barriers, it's the market. And so this allows teams to sort of work around that market. It's brilliant. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much, Alex, for being on the show. And thank you for having me. This is so fun. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Take care. Bye, everyone. So after that, Jen T, have you decided you're going to get into the Meta Angels as well? I mean, I, I haven't yet, but I feel like I need to. What they're doing is so cool and okay. so, so, I mean, so beneficial to so many people and it's really yeah. making a difference. So like, it's, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. I, I just absolutely love what they're doing and I'm excited to jump into their community and see how the nifty chicks and myself can, can help, you know, provide even more support to those that need whatever it is. You know, I, I love, love, love the whole, the wish part and that people can put wishes out there and then others can go help provide whatever that wish is. I think that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. So even if um, you can't afford a meta angel, I mean, join their community, join their discord. You don't need to be an owner. It's like she said, to, to right. get involved. And so, yeah, I, I think it's yeah. a no brainer to absolutely join that discord and, and the community. I agree. And if you want to, you know, make one of our wishes come true, you could go leave us a review, a five-star review preferably on, you know, iTunes, Spotify, wherever it is that you listen to the Nifty Chicks. We would love to hear your reviews and, you know, reviews really do help more people learn about the show and, you know, help us gain more exposure. And the reason we're asking for that is because we really just want to help more people learn about NFTs. And that's our main goal. So that's we would right. love it that's if you right. leave us a review. That's right. And always remember, thank you so much for listening. Remember, invest in yourself. You are worth it. Please listen carefully to the following disclaimer. Neither the host nor the guests of the Nifty Chicks podcast are acting in the capacity of financial advisors. We wish to remain transparent and impartial to the NFT community at all times, and therefore, the content provided by the Nifty Chicks hosts and guests are intended for general information purposes only. Nothing written or discussed by the Nifty Chicks hosts and guests should be construed or relied upon as investment, financial, legal, regulatory, accounting, tax, or similar advice. Nothing should be interpreted as a solicitation to invest in any cryptocurrency or NFT, and nothing herein should be construed as a recommendation to engage in any investment strategy or transaction. Please be advised that it is in your own best interest to consult with investment, legal, tax, or similar professionals regarding any specific situation and any prospective transaction decisions. You must do your own research when considering investing in cryptocurrencies or NFTs. We are simply sharing our journey with you as we learn more about the world of NFTs. Happy minting.